Hi Al, out here in my backyard again. If you hear leaves in the breeze or birds calling, just remember that that's biology. We made it to chapter 9. We've been building on and combining earlier concepts as we've gone through the term. We'll continue that here. In chapter 2, we learned about protein structure, strands of amino acids that fold on themselves in complex ways. We know that the three-dimensional folding structure determines protein function. In chapter 3, we saw that a number of cellular organelles contribute to protein production. The nucleus, the rough ER, the Golgi apparatus, and all the other cellular structures rely on their own sets of proteins. For example, we discussed the movement of vesicles along the protein-based cytoskeleton fibers. And we discussed transmembrane movement of materials by way of protein-dependent facilitated diffusion and active transport. In chapter 4, we learned about enzymes, the cell's protein tool set that is responsible for performing pretty much all of the specific metabolic function that a cell performs. In chapter 6 and 7, we saw how important proteins are. We have a dedicated set of recipes, our genome, to make all the proteins we need. When we have the correct numbers of those recipes, things have a chance of working right. But if our cells stray from that typical number of recipes, it's almost certain that there will be major changes. So major that Down syndrome is by far the mildest of the human conditions where there is something other than 46 chromosomes per cell. Mitosis and meiosis were both discovered around the 1880s. Remember that the processes of mitosis and meiosis involve nuclear division, the orderly separation of sets of chromosomes which is usually, usually followed by cytokinesis, or cell division. For this reason, biologists were confident that the molecules of inheritance must be in the nucleus. But the nucleus contains many molecules, especially DNA and proteins, the things that make up chromosomes. Through the first half of the 1900s, scientists were racing to be uh, the ones to figure out the genetic material. They knew the genetic material had to have two key characteristics. It had to be replicable and it had to store the information that could be acted upon. Most scientists thought that genes had to be made of proteins because proteins are so diverse. By the 1940s, evidence was accumulating that DNA was the genetic material, but there was st still quite a bit of doubt. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick published their model for the three-dimensional structure of DNA. Almost immediately, the scientific community realized that the genetic material must be DNA. From that point, the genetics age began and is still going strong. What is it about the structure of DNA that allows it to be replicable and to store information? Remember from chapter 2 that most biological macromolecules are built from sticking together building blocks called monomers. The monomers of DNA are called nucleotides. Each DNA nucleotide has three parts. One, a sugar called deoxyribose, two, a phosphate group, and three, a nitrogen-containing base. The deoxyribose sugar has five carbons. Those five carbons have been given names. The carbon on the right is called the one prime carbon. The nitrogenous base is attached to the one prime carbon. The two prime carbon is below the one prime carbon. The three prime carbon is to the left of the two prime carbon. An OH group is attached to the three prime carbon. We'll see that this OH group is an important binding site during the growth of the DNA molecule. The four prime carbon is above the three prime carbon. The 5' prime carbon is attached to the 4' prime carbon and sits up off the carbon ring. The phosphate group is attached to the 5' prime carbon. Every DNA nucleotide has the deoxyribose sugar and phosphate group. There are four different types of nitrogenous bases. The one shown in figure A was adenine. Other nucleotides have guanine attached like this, yet other nucleotides have cytosine, and still others have thymine, four types of DNA nucleotides. You could think of them as being like the DNA alphabet. From these four letters, a whole world of genes can be written. 
we'll see how these nucleotides are strung together to make the polymer deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, in the next video.